response here in Manchester. I think you're undefeated in in England in the UFC. So I'm curious, like, how's fight week been? You know, preparation, you know, featherweight in Manchester, all that. Uh, it's always better when I'm in my, my own country. You know, obviously I don't have to travel too far. Um, home comforts, if you like. You know, obviously I'm a few hours from home, so I am staying here in the hotel. Um, but yeah, good. You know, 145 is obviously a lot easier for me to make weight-wise. So, you know, I'm healthy, I'm happy, and I just need to uh, go in there Saturday night and do the job. Does it feel more like fight night, fight, even though you are fighting in the UK, like you do have to go to the fighter hotel and everything? Because we've talked to some fighters that even though they fight in their hometown, they still like to keep the routine of, you know, fighter hotel and everything like that rather than sleeping in their own home. Uh, I always prefer being in my own home. Um, I'm just a home comfort guy, you know, I like my family around me. Um, obviously my dad's my coach, so I'm lucky to have him here with me at the, the hotel. But, yeah, you know, the UFC make everything easy for us. So, you know, we've got the Institute now, we've got all of this stuff here. So, you know, if you like, we're spoiled. And obviously you're fighting Daniel Pineda, was he, he's obviously been in the UFC for quite a while, had a little bit of a break, they brought him back, so was he ever on your radar coming up or did you just start thinking about him when they presented the name? So I've seen the name only because he fought previous opponents that I've had, so I've you know looked at his fights when studying other opponents, um, but yeah, you know, as you say, he's been in the game for a very long time, you know, he's very experienced, I think he fought Mike Brown back in UFC yeah. 1, 3 something, you know, a long time ago, so... You know, obviously, I'll put respect on his name. You know, he's been in the game for a very long time. So, you know, good matchup um, comes to fight. And, yeah, you know, I look forward to fighting him on Saturday night. And he, I don't think he's ever fought to a decision win. All of his victories have been by stoppage, most of them coming by submission. So, uh, what kind of fight are you expecting from him? Because even though, like, the losses he's had to, like, Andre Fila, I know that was a no contest, but he wasn't getting put away. He just kind of kept coming forward. So, obviously, he's tough as old boots. You know, he's... Um, a veteran, you know, he's obviously a fighter, so I know that I'm going to need to put him out to finish him. You know, he's very tough, so, um, you know, I expect him to be, be very durable. He, from what I see in his fights, looks like he gasses quite a lot, so, you know, maybe that's why he's not winning decisions as much, because he's more of a, if he can't get the stoppage straight away, you know, he maybe deteriorates in the fights. So, um, I'm confident with my skill set that I'm going to go in there and do the job, and, um, yeah, I just need to put my money where my mouth is. And then final one for me, um, I don't know if you saw, but the uh, Association of Boxing Commission uh, passed some new uh, rules that on November 1st, they're gonna allow 12 to six elbows. And they've redefined what a grounded opponent's gonna be. I'm curious, what do you make of these these new rule changes and um, uh, that going into effect in November? Um, it's fine with me. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we're fighting. I think grounded opponents a long time ago should have been both knees on the floor or your back on the floor. You know, this all touching the floor and then coming off, I think it's too um, deceiving. You know, it's, it's just confusing your opponent and it's not a downed opponent. You know, if we was wrestling, I would need to take you down and put you back on the mat for it to count as a takedown. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm glad they just, yeah, it, it, it works for me. You know, it means that I can um, do more in my skill set. Is that frustrating when not every commission has the same rules for a grounded opponent? Some of them it's one hand, some of them it's two hands. It's like, does that go into like you choosing fights, or is it that complicated? It, it doesn't really affect me too much, but it can be a little bit confusing. You know, but obviously the UFC before always have the ref come and give us the rule breakdown, etc. So you know, we always just before the fight will ask. But it would be nice to you know know exactly what we can do. Thank you. Like fighting on home soil, but we're fighting on US time zone which is a bit of a weird one for all the, all the Brits fighting on the card. Just wondered, what changes have you made in terms of making sure you're going to be peaking on fight night? And obviously, having Brett, Brett fought at 204 in the middle of the night last time, I wondered what experiences he's been able to share with you from that to help prep you for this. So me personally, I go to sleep quite late anyway. You know, I'm usually going to bed at midnight, half 12, that sort of thing on a normal day. So all I've done is just increase my time a little bit. You know, I don't think I'm going to need to change my regime if you like to have a fight at 2.30, you know, if someone knocked on my door saying that someone's robbing my car or something at night, you know, I'm not going to have an issue getting awake, so the adrenaline rush, etc., that will kick in for me, you know, for someone like Tom Aspinall, it might be a lot worse because he's at 5 a.m., but yeah, for me, I just need to stay up a couple of more hours and, you know, I've done a few late night sessions just to test it out and see how I feel and, you know, I have no issues once the music's on and my coach has got the pads on, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. And you mentioned earlier about feeling much happier at 145 pounds. Just give us a sense of how much better it is to be able to just get in there with that extra 10 pounds on the frame and 
not have to make that, that really tough weight cut down to 35. It just means I can have a life. You know, the, the cuts to 135, let's say that for the camp, six weeks of it, I'm miserable. If I fight three times a year, six, 12, 18, 18 weeks of the year, I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. You know, I'm not, not enjoying it at all. And that's the whole reason why I do this sport, because one, obviously it pays me very well, but it didn't for the first 10 years. So the enjoyment is what I do it for. When you start to take that away, why am I doing it? You know, I may as well go and get a job. So I thought well, instead of doing that, I'll go up a weight. You know, I don't have any issues in the gym with guys that are heavier than me. If anything, I'll probably struggle with the smaller guys. And um, yeah, you know, I think the proof's in the pudding. I've had in total five fights at 145. I've only lost one, which had nothing to do with weight. And I've got that speed advantage. And uh, last one from me. Obviously, it's a big night for the UK MMA. Two Brits in title fights at the top of the card. I just wondered what your what your thoughts were on those two fights and how you think Tom and uh, Leon will perform in those two fights. Call me biased, but I think they're both going to get the job done, and uh, I think they're going to get it done in good fashion. Great stuff. Thanks a lot. Nathaniel down here. Um, this is your first fight as a father. Yes. Uh, how, how's it? Congratulations, obviously. Thank but uh, how does it feel going into fight week, being a dad? It feels good, you know, it feels um, more pressure because I don't feel like I'm fighting for me anymore, I feel like I'm fighting for my daughter, um, but what motivation to have behind me, you know, if I wasn't motivated enough as it is now, I'm, I'm definitely motivated, so, you know, my whole camp, I've had a new fire inside me, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to going in now on Saturday night and getting to showcase it. And a lot of people say that it changes their outlook and fighting in general in terms of uh, the duration of how long they want to compete. Has that been the case for you or have you not thought about that? Yeah, so I've always said that I don't want to retire at a late age. You know, I would like to retire at a young age when I've got my health because I don't want my daughter to see me punch drunk, if you like. I don't want my daughter to see me be a gatekeeper for young up-and-coming fighters. You know, when you've seen fighters in the past that are you know, struggling to hang the gloves up and it just ruins the end of their career, I don't want that to be me. So, you know, obviously I need to fight to get paid and that's why I've got businesses outside of fighting now because I'm hoping that one day they'll be able to cover my finances and then all I have to do is fight when I want to for the passion, you know, not for the paycheck. Um, but yeah, you know, I always take my health very seriously and now, you know, being a dad, it's even more important. You know, I've even got life insurance now. So uh, yeah, the perks of being a dad, right? And final one for me, what did you make of uh, Daniel's performance against Alex Caceres last time? Um, so, you know, I watched, watched the fight. It, it was a good fight, you know, obviously Alex Caceres won, but Alex is very tricky. Um, again, like I said earlier, I just see that Pineda fatigues a bit over time, and he does show that in the fights, you know. Sometimes fighters can be fatiguing, but they've got the good poker, poker face, sorry. And, uh, yeah, you know, when he starts to fatigue, you can see it. Nathaniel. Um, you are one of the biggest favourites on the card. I think you're one to three on. He's four to one to get the win. I'm just wondering, is that how you see the fight? Do you feel like this is one you really should be getting the job done? If I'm honest, I completely ignore that because I actually like being the underdog. You know, I prefer that. Um, when I fought Mohammed Namov, everyone was um, looking past him, and I didn't like that on fight week. You know, it, it felt weird when people said, "Oh, you know, this is an easy fight for you." It's the UFC. There's no such thing as an easy fight. Um, it's four ounce gloves, you know, so anyone can be dangerous on the night. So, yeah, you know, I'm going into this fight looking like I'm fighting Ilya Chopora for the belt, you know. Um, but, yeah, I'm always confident in my skill set that regardless who I go up against, you know, I'm, I'm going to get the win. And that last fight you mentioned there, Mohammed, it obviously didn't go your way. What, what changes from that fight to this fight in terms of the camp and the preparation to it? Does anything change? No, not, not so much anything changed. When I watched the fight back, I realised how dirty he was being, you know, in the fight, I didn't really realise it, so after, you know, I shook his hand, but nah, you know, when I watched the fight back, it pissed me off, um, and the one thing that I'm going to take away from it is I can make as many excuses as I like, but if I had finished the fight, I wouldn't need to argue whether the ref should have deducted a point, or, you know, whether the judge has got it right, what not, so, yeah, for me now, it's about finishing these fights, and making sure that it's all in my control. That's great, good luck. Thank you. Nathaniel, back here. Um, your daughter has gone through quite the fight for her life. How much has that inspired you going into this fight? Um, she's made it easy for me, mate. You know, whenever I feel like oh, I don't want to go training or I don't want to diet down my weight, etc., I just look at her and what she's gone through, and it just toughens me up. Um, so yeah, you know, she's made me tougher. Um, 
And when I see her just smiling and cracking on with life, it makes me realise how spoiled and whingy that we can be as human beings. And um, yeah, you know, she's given me a positive outlook now and uh, made me a better person. And you've been very open about your OCD and your mental health. How important do you think it is for athletes to be open about their mental health and, you know, not see the hate that they might get for being open about stuff like that? So, definitely I think it's good to talk about it. I was fortunate enough that I've got a good family and a wife, so I can always talk about mine. I never wanted to actually bring mine out into the public because I didn't want people to maybe say that I was doing it for clout, or, you know, I know Tyson Fury at the time was talking about it. I didn't want people to go, oh, you know, he's just another one jumping on the bandwagon. So, I never mentioned it until I got asked the question. And all I've had since I have been speaking about it is positive feedback. You know, people messaging me how much it helps them just seeing me talk about it. So, you know, it's a good feeling. And if I can talk about it and help people in the world, then, you know, I'm all for it. I'm not embarrassed about it. Um, so, yeah, when people ask me, you know, I'm, I'm open to uh, conversations. And uh, you mentioned having other businesses outside of finding one of those being the Prospect Academy. Yeah. Uh, how, how fun has that been to, to run and, and be part of? Mate, it's been great, you know, obviously, you know yourself, being on board, it's a good community we've got. Um, me, personally, I can't sit still, so, you know, when I finish my training session in the morning, for my mental health, I need to keep busy, I need to keep occupied, um, and starting these businesses has done that, you know, at the very beginning when I started, it was purely to have a project, to have something to focus my mind on, and, um, you know, stay out of the dark cloud days, if you like, and, you know, it's definitely been a help, so... Um, yeah, for all those that are on board, I'm grateful to have you on there. And my final question, uh, Daniel Pineda has popped for um, performance enhancing drugs in the past. Is, is that any, does that cross your mind at all when you're training for him? Mm, not when I'm training. I have a couple of times for when Yusada have come up to my house. I think, oh, I hope you're doing the same for him, you know, seeing as he has popped before. Uh, yeah, I would like to think that he's not doing that anymore with, you know, how strict the sport is now and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, I can't accuse anyone until obviously results have come in, but I imagine that you saw that I have tested it. Any final questions? Cool. Thank you, guys.